Okay, so <clears throat> um, let's uh, start the slides. Um, okay, so we'll talk about irreversible processes and entropy. Uh, we'll show you how to calculate the change in entropy in certain situations. Um, and we'll uh, t talk about the second law of thermodynamics um, and um, uh, we'll talk about heat engines and refrigerators. Okay. And what we'll be in, mainly interested in is the efficiency of heat engines and efficiency of refrigerators. Okay, so we have four laws of thermodynamics. Uh, the zeroth law, as you saw, just says that two objects at the same temperature do not exchange, uh, do not exchange any net heat. The first law of thermodynamics is a conservation of energy principle. The second law of thermodynamics is the topic of this chapter. And it postulates entropy. Uh, and the second law states that the entropy of an isolated macroscopic system never decreases. So the entropy of an isolated thermodynamic system never decreases. And this statement precludes, so what this statement precludes is uh, if you had an isolated system that had uneven temperature, heat would flow from the hotter end to the colder end and never from the colder end to the hotter end. Okay, so that's what this law says. Uh, the third law says you'll never be able to reach uh, absolute zero. Okay. So here's a natural process. Uh, again, you pour hot water into a glass and place it on the table the water will slowly cool until it reaches the temperature of its surrounding. Uh, and this is an irreversible process. Uh, what we mean by that is, is uh, uh, you couldn't do anything where, where you could bring the heat back from the room and make the water hot again in the glass. Okay. And at the end of it, the room would be in the original condition. So you could not do that. So this is an irreversible process. Okay. So again, here, you would be astonished if instead the water got warmer and the air in the room cooled down slightly while conserving energy. Okay. So <clears throat> that's what this chapter is about, trying to explain why processes occur only in the direction they do occur. The natural processes. Okay. All right. So um, again, here's another example. There's here's a cup, and I'll let you guys uh, read this uh, on your own. So here's a cup at 40 degrees Celsius, which has ice at zero degrees Celsius. And what happens is heat flows from the cup to the ice, and <clears throat> this system eventually comes to equilibrium where uh, the cup and the ice and the melted ice are at the same temperature. Okay. And so the ice will melt to water, the water will then warm and the cup will, will cool. It's not possible to make small changes in any thermodynamic variable and return the system to the state corresponding to the warm can. So you cannot make any changes, small changes and bring this back to the, there while the environment is the same, okay? And so this, is a, this process is irreversible. It, you cannot go in the reverse direction, okay? So all real life thermodynamic processes are irreversible. And again, uh, let me do the PV diagram. So, So remember, um, we used we would take gases as a typical thermodynamic system to illustrate points. And let's say a thermodynamic system is in that initial state, and here is the final state. Um, a reversible process would be if you could if you're going from here the initial state to the final state. You could pause at intermediate steps. Intermediate steps would be equilibrium states. 
and you could, if you could go backwards, then that would be a reversible process. Okay. So, and irreversible process is something that only uh, happens only in one direction. You couldn't go back in the, in the opposite direction. Okay. So all real life thermodynamic processes are irreversible. Um, so, um, in this example, this is a thermodynamic process. The process occurred in this direction and it does not occur in the backward direction. Okay. So, uh, again, a reversible process is one in which the systems can be returned to its initial condition in infinitesimal steps. So, if you are going from this initial state to that final state, if you can taking small steps, you can come back, and then that would be a reversible process. Um, so all naturally occurring processes are known to be irreversible. So every process that occurs in nature naturally is an irreversible process. So the question is, why do we talk about a reversible process? Um, a reversible process is a theoretical concept and it's useful in doing some cal in doing calculations. And so that's why we talk about it. Okay, so it's an idealized process. It's a frictionless process where then we're in a process where no energy is dissipated. Okay. So all naturally occurring processes are uh, irreversible. Okay. Uh, so heat always flows from a hotter object to a colder object. And so that's an example of an irreversible process. Okay. Uh, here's another example of an irreversible process, popcorn popping. You cannot uh, make the popcorn back into uh, kernels, corn kernels, okay? That's a one-way street. Yeah. Uh, you couldn't uncook a pizza, yeah. So let's say you take a bite of a pizza, you don't like it and you can't refreeze it, uncook it and return it to Publix, okay? So, uh, if an irreversible process occurred in closed systems, the entropy of the system always increases. And that's the statement of the second law of thermodynamics. Okay. <clears throat> so we'll call, uh, we'll define entropy in a second. So, um, and here's another statement you'll come across. Since the entropy of a closed system always increases, it's sometimes called the arrow of time. It tells you what direction time flows in. Okay, so here is entropy. Uh, we'll uh, read all this, uh, all these bullet points since they're entropy, uh, since they're important. So entropy is a measure of disorder in the system. Yeah, that's what it measures, how much disorder there is in the system. It's a state function, just like temperature and internal energy. So what does that mean? The fact that it's a state function uh, okay. uh, so again, so here's a PV diagram, and for a, a state function, just so this point represents the state of the system. Okay, so what we're saying is that's the pressure of the system, that's the volume of the system, and um, there are other parameters associated with it. But that's a state. That's the state of the system. It doesn't depend on how you got there, okay? And it doesn't depend on where you're going. So it just depends, the, if the value depends just on your state, that's called the state function. Uh, pressure, temperature, energy, entropy, volume, these are all state functions, okay? So entropy is a state function like that, okay? Uh, change in entropy. Okay, so if you have a state function, uh, if this is your initial state, that's your final state. Change in entropy is the entropy in the final state minus the entropy in the initial state. And change in entropy is independent of the path. You can go from this state to that state in any, along any path, and the change in entropy will be independent of the path. of the path taken. 
just like change in internal energy is independent of the path. You saw that in the first, with the first law. Change in entropy can be calculated. So uh, we will be interested in calculating change in entropy of a system. And so uh, we'll show you two ways of calculating change in entropy. Uh, in terms of heat gained or lost, in terms of possible microstates for a given macrostate of a system. Now, this is, we will always calculate it this way. This is a higher level calculation and we won't do that. Okay. So, and that's uh, only possible for very few systems. So in practice, this is the way we will do in terms of heat gained or lost. Now, here's a very nice way to think of entropy. The entropy of a system is the natural logarithm of a large number of different ways. Uh, logarithm of the number of different ways, its total energy can be divided upon among all its constituents. Okay. The number of fully specified accessible uh, microstates of the system. Uh, we'll come to that uh, later. Okay. All right, so we will often be interested in calculating the change in entropy of a system. Change in entropy is final entropy minus initial entropy. And an infinitesimal change in entropy Okay, so change in entropy of a system is how much heat did you absorb, the system absorb, and at what temperature did you do it? Uh, so that's how entropy is defined, and its units are energy is measured in joules, this is in Kelvin, so joules per Kelvin, that, those are the units. Okay. And so a finite change in entropy would be the integral of that, which is the integral, that integral. Okay, so oftentimes you will be interested in calculating this. Okay. And we'll give you expressions for uh, this value in certain situations. Okay, so that's how you'll calculate change in entropy. Change in entropy, so the infinitesimal change in entropy is dq by t, and that integral gives you the change in entropy. Okay. So, <clears throat> Let's say your system went from here to there, and you want to calculate the change in entropy when your system goes from here to there. Okay. Now, the change, this change in entropy doesn't matter. How, it doesn't matter what path you take. The change in entropy should come out to be the same, uh, like we saw in this uh, in this diagram. The change in entropy from here to there is independent of the path taken. Okay. So. Um, what we'll do is, um, so what we'll do is, if you're interested in calculating the change in entropy from this state to that state, if there is a reversible process that can be, that can connect these two points, calculate the change in entropy along that point, and now you have the change in entropy even for an irreversible path, okay? So that's the idea, and that's the use, usefulness of reversible paths, okay? So if your system goes from an initial state to a final state, connect the two states by a reversible path and calculate the entropy change along that path, okay? So that's what we'll do. So here's a process. <clears throat> okay, so imagine this chamber, uh, and this valve is closed, this is per a perfect vacuum. Now again, that would be very hard to achieve, but uh, let's uh, imagine this. And now if you open the valve, this air will leak out here. And this is called a free expansion. It's called a free expansion because since the, this was a vacuum, the gas as, as it was expanding, it didn't do any work, so it didn't lose any, didn't lose any of its energy. Okay, so this is called a free expansion. And now the gas has expanded since it didn't lose any energy, its temperature remains the same. Okay, and so, um, <clears throat> so by the way, so while this free expansion was occurring, uh, the temperature, pressure, and volume inside the gap, and the temperature and pressure 
of the gas fluctuate unpredictably during an irreversible process. So for example, during a pre-expansion. So since, and uh, here is where we'll use the reversible process. Since entropy is a state function, the integral can be allowed, evaluated along a reversible path with the same endpoints. So all you have to do is connect these two points by a reversible path and calculate the entropy change along that path. So during an irreversible free expansion of an ideal gas in an insulated con container, the temperature must remain constant, uh, like we said before, okay? So those two points, you, since the temperature will remain, uh, uh, since the gas is not uh, losing any energy, you can connect those paths by an isotherm, okay? And then calculate the change in entropy along that path. So here's the first law of thermodynamics, change in internal energy is dQ by dW. In that free expansion, uh, the internal energy did not change, so that's equal to zero. So dQ is dW. So here's the change in entropy, dQ by T, and dQ is equal to dW, the work done, which is PdV. Okay. And so for a free expansion, we've shown, you can sh see that this is, uh, PdV is uh, nRT. Okay, so let me actually derive that. All right, so what we are doing is we are calculating the change in entropy. Yeah. along an isothermal, isotherm, okay. change in entropy was d cubed by p, and here's the first law of thermodynamics, which says for an infinitesimal change, the change in internal energy was equal to the heat absorbed minus the small amount of work done. But in this process, um, in this free expansion process, DE was zero, the chain internal energy did not change. So DQ was equal to DW. DW is P DV, okay. And from an ideal gas, we know that PV equal to NRT, P D V equal to N oops N R T and P D V is N R D T. Okay. So um, D Q is uh, D W which is that which is equal to N R D T by T. Oops, um, my bad here. So this was an iso. This was an isothermal process. Uh, yeah. My mistake here. So this was a PDV and. PV equal to NRT, P is equal to NRT by V. Okay, so that's, uh, so DQ is PDV by T and uh, so change in entropy was dq by t, pdv by t equal to, and pdv was nrt, uh, or p was equal to, p is equal to nrt by v. Okay, so nrt by v, divided by T, and so the T cancels, and N R log of V 
v initial to v final and so this works out to n r log v final over v initial okay so that is what was shown here that's what's shown here okay so what we have done is what this calculation shows you is during a free expansion this is an irreversible process again this was a vacuum what you did was you took this gas open this valve and let the gas expand since the gas didn't does not do any work it's um, expanding into a vacuum its temperature doesn't change its internal energy doesn't change and so the gas went from this initial state to that final state we connected it by a reversible path which was an isotherm and calculated the change in entropy and this is the value for the entropy we came we came up with okay so n r times log of final volume divided by initial volume okay. so that's the change in entropy and that's what we were interested in okay so here's a more general calculation so that was the change in entropy for a pre-expansion okay um, so that was a change in entropy for a free expansion. Here is a more general uh, expansion. So um, again, here's the first law of thermodynamics. DQ is DE, PD. Um, work done is uh, PW, PDV. All right, so, and change in internal energy is uh, um, N times the, uh, so we are doing this calculation for an ideal gas and uh, cv times dt okay so again if you go through this calculation so this is the change in entropy okay so the change in entropy where for an ideal gas which undergoes a temperature change and whose volume changes as well is this okay so we've shown you how to calculate the change in entropy for a or an ideal gas system, okay? So for instance, this, in this last case, the temperature did not change. So along an isotherm, the temperature did not change. And if the temperature didn't, does not change, T final is equal to T initial, this is one, and log of one is zero. So this term would be zero. And you have this, the second term, which is, which is what there, that was there, okay, last time for the free expansion. Okay, so here's the change in entropy for a general process in an ideal gas system. Okay. Um, but in general, um, the way to calculate change in entropy is, so for any general system, the way to calculate, so the infinitesimal change in entropy is how much heat you added to the system at what temperature. And for a finite change, for a finite change, you just sum up all those terms. Okay. So you do that integral. That's how we, you would calculate the change in entropy. Now, we just happen to show the calculation for an ideal gas system, right, since that was easy to do. Okay. All right. Um, so let's see. Okay, so the second law of thermodynamics states in a closed system, entropy increases during irreversible processes and remains constant during reversible processes. It never decreases. So entropy never decreases uh, uh, for a closed uh, system. And so this is the statement of the second law of thermodynamics. Okay. All right, we'll pause now uh, and uh, I will... Uh, let you guys 